Today I'd like to tell you why gambling sucks, and poker sucks, and video games suck. So, in this world we have a ton of really complex problems. Problems so complicated that by the time you die, much of them will go unanswered. To take a world like that, where we have so many good competitions to be had with nature, and abstract and replace our natural competition against nature with a competition against other people, well, it's much less exciting. If you're able to compete against reality and solve a problem, discover something, invent something, that type of discovery lasts throughout the ages, a lasting testament to your existence in this world. Whereas the competitions that you have in silly made up things versus other people other people are much less challenging target than this giant world of energy and mass that we live in. So let me give you an example. If you go on television or you watch uh, live streams on the internet, there's a lot of people, intelligent people, that are very, very good at playing poker. And poker is a game that has a limited number of players and a limited number of skills that you learn, which are exportable to other areas. You could say that you learn some game theory. You could say that you learn how to read other people and control communication, uh, being able to tell bluff from real, reading intention, uh, perhaps empathy, feeling into the types of responses and feelings other people would have when they get certain sets of hands. The problem is that if you were to isolate that behavior to just an island, right? If you were to say there's seven people in the world and they all live on this island and those seven people are going to play a card game with each other and all they're going to do is play that card game, well, nothing would get done. They would all starve to death because you need to eat, you need to take care of your family, you need to go to the bathroom, right? There's more to life than playing card games. And it's much worse than it sounds. You're not only... Uh, getting very good at something which doesn't have a benefit outside of it. But even worse than that, you're harming all the people that you play with. It's not even a zero-sum game. It's a less-than-zero-sum game because the house takes its rake, takes its percentage, and you had the transition time to get there, the transition time to leave. You occupy your consciousness with reading books and watching other excellent people play and theorizing about new strategies. The game doesn't end when you leave the table. It doesn't start when you get to the table, and the costs and influence that it have on your life uh, go far beyond the place in which you play, to the point where there are some people that play at home, and they'll play 10 hands at once across 10 screens or, you know, 10 windows on the same screen, and it just occupies more and more of their consciousness to the point where they're really just bad computers, right? Or... I'm going to stick with bad computers. I mean, you could say you could uh, be a great computer if you're able to win money at poker, but if you're tactically right at strategically the wrong thing, it's worse, right? So a computer that would be very good at masturbating all day, it could be the world's best masturbating computer. But other than maybe the viewing rights that you could sell, it's not uh, really useful to the rest of the world, right? So point one fight the real world, discover real things, have real challenges in reality instead of fake abstracted challenges versus people. Uh, because it's a less advertised path that less people take, there's much more profit in it. The more people that do a thing, the less money there is in that thing, and poker's one of those, right? It's not hard to play poker. There's guidebooks on it. How many real guidebooks on there are there on how to live real life? It's not that many, right? So... You know, what, what uh, guidebook do you know that tells you what kind of girl you should date, what job you should work, whether you should wear briefs or boxers, you know, how to get better sleep? You kind of got to read 20 books to do that, right? So, uh, one, do not spend your time competing with people. Spend your time competing against the reality of the world that we live in. Discover new things, right? Don't discover how to just take someone else's money. Two, it's not a zero-sum game. It's destructive. Uh, the money that you win came out of someone else's pocket, and that person's probably not very happy. You're, to some degree, harming that person. Third part, when you win at poker, you actually lose. 
probably should have part, put that as part one. The person that loses at poker no longer has their life consumed by the stupid game and has the opportunity to go and interact with the real world and do things that are actually rare and actually valuable uh, that have lasting value. Whereas the person that wins at poker or wins at the stock market or wins at any other game versus other people, they have harmed someone on the other side, the loser. They have usually not invented something new, made lasting change in the world. Uh, I guess you could call it competition masturbation. <laughs> like masturbating feels good, but it's not that productive, right? And winning games feels good, but it's not that productive. It feels really good, by the way. Winning a fight, winning a game, uh, winning any competition, at least to the masculine energy, is very, very, very consuming. So don't compete versus other people. Compete versus the real world. You make a lot more money. Realize that whatever it is that you get good at is going to consume a lot of hours out of your life. And so you be very careful what you choose to get good at and what your hobbies are, because those hobbies are what you're likely to go into for a profession or it'll influence the people that you meet. It'll influence, uh, you know, who you have kids with, right? Uh, you're going to enjoy the things that you get good at. So feel free to choose something you don't like when you start, but is valuable and pays well, right? And then once you get good at it, now it's fun. It may not have been fun when you started. I mean, how fun would learning the violin or, you know, learning to dance be when you suck at it? It's probably terrible or God forbid you learn to play the drums in a small house, your family's probably really going to dislike you probably forever, but at least when you start out and you suck, right? So compete versus the real world, not fake competitions versus people. Realize that whatever you hobby at is going to influence the connections you make in your life, the relationships you have in your life. It's going to take over your consciousness. There's more valuable in doing the things that less people are doing, usually, because our value is in indirect proportion to the availability of a thing. So the more common a thing is, the less valuable it is. And the less common it is, the more valuable, usually, right? And uh, realize you're hurting someone on the other side of the transaction and realize that losing can actually be winning if it gets you to go do something productive instead of staring at a screen all day, doing something which doesn't feed anyone, doesn't build anything, doesn't help anyone, shifting zeros and ones around on the stock market or shifting uh, poker chips around a table. These are not the highest and best uses of the most intelligent people on the planet. I know there's value in the accurate pricing of securities, but you could say that there's too many smart people staring at screens trying to figure out how to screw other smart people out of their money. And at some point, it's really not healthy for the, the ecosystem that we live in. It's much better that we have less people trying to shave fractions of a second or fractions of a millisecond off of front running a trade uh, and you know high frequency trading. And if all those people would stop doing that mental masturbation, human competition thing, and switch into productive things that influence the real world, discovery, uh, you can still compete, you know, start a business, you're still competing, but you're competing not in some fake abstraction that was created by a man with man-made rules, but create, you know, but participating in the real world that makes all the stuff we use and decides how people spend all the hours of their life. You know, if you start a business and you employ people, you literally decide how these people will live over a third of their life. That's huge. I mean, that's absolutely huge. I, I think that to have that responsibility to control the lives of so many by being an employer is a far better and higher calling than finding a way to take money from some poor other bastard that may have got dealt a bad hand or may not have the same skills as you. He's the guy that actually gets to go and work and replace that money and make the world a better place while you're just sitting around as the winner figuring out how to screw more people out of their money. It's not that wholesome. It's not that great. And if you look at the Fortune 400, richest people, they're not poker players. They make their money doing other things because doing other things pays far better than uh, winning a game or playing a game.